showing you the top things to do while visiting Orlando. There will be timestamps below so you can click around from destination to destination. First up, we're actually out here at the Kennedy Space Center, which is about an hour drive away from Orlando. But if you wanted to learn about NASA and the history of the shuttles, come out here to the Kennedy Space Center, located out here on Cape Canaveral. If you do come out here, set aside a full day for this one. And this time we're headed to Disney World's Animal Kingdom theme park. It's basically an amazing zoo with a lot of rides, including the River Rapids ride as well as Pandora. And in terms of animals, you're going to see gorillas, giraffes, they also have a safari. Pandora, Avatar World really is the big ticket here. Now Disney has these multi-park passes so you can try and incorporate other parks from Disney into your pass, so try to do that. A half day at Animal Kingdom is perfect, but if you wanna slow it down and do a full day, that's also recommended. The benefit of a half day pass is you could do Animal Kingdom and then Hollywood Studios all in the same day. Just down the road from Animal Kingdom is the Magic Kingdom. Now remember, there are five parks in the Disney complex. There's Epcot, Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and then a water park called Typhoon Lagoon. So Magic Kingdom is basically where you go for the kids. This is where you see the castle. This is where you see Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and all the other characters. I also enjoy riding the Log Ride, Space Mountain, Seven Dwarves, Mine Train, Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's a small world after all. I would plan for a full day at Magic Kingdom if I had kids. Next up, we're headed to Disney Hollywood Studios. This is also in the Disney complex. Here, they're going to have more of the Hollywood theme. I would say it's very similar to Universal Studios. You can see the Indiana Jones show going on right here. They have several different shows here now, like Beauty and the Beast, Green Army Drum Corps, Disney Junior Play and Dance, and for the first time ever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. But what I really like is this area where they have Star Wars and you can see Jabba the Hutt. You can also see Chewbacca, also Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader. They're walking around here and the Jedi Knights. Next up is Epcot. So Epcot gets a mixed bag review. If you're into fast rides, Epcot doesn't have that. If you're into themes and you're a foodie, they've got really good food here actually. Some of the best in all the Disney parks and themed villages. So I just wanted to put that out there if you're looking for thrills, but you can see they've got the Sky Train and other themed areas around here. It's more of a relaxing park. There's also a big lake right in the middle of Epcot. Another thing to keep in mind, over the last few years, they have been adding new attractions and rides to Epcot. Something to definitely keep on the radar and check on. Even though there is construction going on around the park, it's not too big of a distraction to take away from your overall experience. Also, we did a full Florida travel guide of the best places to go across Florida. You can check in the description below to find that video there. Now let's explore Universal Studios. There's three different parks over here. Universal Studios Florida, which is the one we're looking at right now. There's also Islands of Adventure, and then there's Volcano Bay, which is an amazing water park. We'll be showing you that in a few here. The big attraction here is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which we're walking around now. You can also see the castle. This is all at Universal Studios, but if you wanted to see more, you go over to Islands of Adventure. Some of the top attractions here include Revenge of the Mummy, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, the Transformers. There's also the Simpsons Ride, E.T. Adventure, Race Through New York. So those are some of the main ones and the Harry Potter, of course. This train here is actually called the Hogwarts Express, and it is a train that will take you to Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, which is exactly where we're headed next. Now, I will say that there are more rides at Islands of Adventure than there are at Universal Studios. Universal Studios is more of that 3D experience. This is more of that exhilarating adventure park for the bigger kids. 
There's some key areas to look at, like the Jurassic Park area where they have many other rides, but here's the Ripsaw Falls. This log ride's sure to get you wet, which feels great on a summer day, not so good on a winter day. As you continue to walk around the park, you come to the Hulk roller coaster. This is an incredible roller coaster with so many rolls, including the 110 foot Cobra roll. Its maximum speed is 67 miles per hour, so this ride really moves. It's called the Incredible Hulk Coaster. If you guys are enjoying this Orlando video, you should send this to your friends and get them excited about going to Orlando. Send them this video. And I know what you guys are wondering right now. Is Universal Studios better than Disney? And the best way I can say it is Universal Studios is a little bit more expensive, but more tailored to the big kids. Disney is more enchanting for the little kids. Now we're going to take a little break from these parks and go over to International Drive. Here they have Icon Park. Some of the rides include Slingshot. They also have Free Fall. I would say if you wanted to plan to visit International Drive, also consider doing Goofy Golfing because they have that here. And Ripley's, believe it or not, they also have a massive Ferris wheel. In my opinion, they have some of the best restaurants in Orlando along International Drive, so that's an added bonus. The area is mainly created as a conference region. So a lot of different conferences are held at these hotels and these conference centers in Orlando. It's actually one of the top conference centers in all of the world. From here, we're just gonna go down the road a bit to Volcano Bay. As I said previously, this is one of my favorite water parks in all of the world, actually. They've got this awesome volcano called Krakatoa and it erupts every 30 minutes or 60 minutes, depending on the time frame for that day. But you're really going to stay drenched here. And Orlando gets very hot. I don't know if you know about this from about May until September. So going to a water park like this, at least one of these days is really gonna keep you cool. There's a really good look right there of Krakatoa Volcano here where the wave pool is. I did tell you there is another water park here. It's not on the list, but it's called Typhoon Lagoon. That's at Disney. Now, Typhoon Lagoon is considered a better water park for families and younger kids, whereas Volcano Bay is considered a water park for teenagers and adults. And do with that information what you will. Next up, we're headed to SeaWorld. Now, SeaWorld has Shamu, of course. They also have roller coasters. Even though the Shamu show is the big ticket in town, some of the roller coasters include the Manta, and there's also a really awesome log ride here. I'm sure you're wondering what's better, SeaWorld Orlando or SeaWorld San Diego. I would say SeaWorld Orlando is better in my opinion. And the orcas just seem to put on a great show here in Orlando, I will say that. And you can see just how big this killer whale is right when it comes up on top of the stage like that. They also have dolphin shows, they have manatees. But I would say this dolphin show encounter that they have around here is really nice. And I believe you can even feed the dolphins some fish while you're here. That might be something to look into. They have several different roller coasters. And I would say the rides here in Orlando are the better than the rides they have in San Diego. This is a look at the log ride. It gets you wet, yes, but it's so fun. They have two different luges that you go down. They also have an aquarium restaurant, which is awesome. I really enjoyed that. You should probably try and get reservations for this restaurant because it does fill up quickly. They also have the Arctic zone where you can see beluga whales. They used to have polar bears here at Wild Arctic, but those will not be coming back. And next up, we're actually gonna head to downtown Orlando where they have the convention center. Also, they have the Orlando Magic's arena and they have a big football field nearby. But when you're down here, you're really going to be walking around Lake Eola where they have a nice big fountain and an amphitheater. People just come here, ride their bike, relax, do some meditation. And then you also have the hustle and bustle of the commerce area. And they have many different restaurants down here. So I would say this is one of the better places to go if you want the better prices for food. The main downtown area is actually called the Church Street District. Uh, you know, they've got a mix of live entertainment nightclubs like i said they've got the food theater they've also got the amway center which i told you about previously so definitely come down here if you're looking for more of that locals vibe ah but the shot you're looking at right here is actually disney springs so we're going to go back out to disney here at disney springs which is a shopping center they have the rainforest cafe they have the m m store they have a lake here Really a nice walking area. This is probably one of the coolest outdoor malls you'll ever go to. 
So as we continue to walk around Disney Springs here, I want to give you a little bit more information about Orlando that'll make your trip easier. So Disney is in Lake Buena Vista. Universal is actually in Orlando. So keep that in mind when you're booking your hotels, depending on what resort you're going to go to. If you plan to go to all the Disney stuff, stay towards Lake Buena Vista. If you plan to go do Universal and SeaWorld and International Drive, then you want to be over more towards Orlando. Now, as far as transportation goes, I recommend taking the Uber instead of getting a rental car because when you get a rental car, you also have to pay for parking. With Uber, you just basically pay as a whole family each destination you go to, to the driver. Oh, and check out this Legos store. If you're into Legos, this is a really awesome place to go. Now we're going to actually go to the old town of Orlando. This is actually in Kissimmee. Out here you have restaurants, a Ferris wheel, the Happy Days Arcade, the Mortem Manor, and then you also have a lot of different shopping boutiques here. But remember, this is the old town. If you're looking for a day where you give your bank account a rest, taking the kids and the family over to Kissimmee to Old Town can definitely save you money and also give you another day to relax because walking around here is going to be relaxing but it gets you a break from all those expensive theme parks. And as we continue to walk around Old Town here, I wanna let you guys know that there's also a Orlando travel guide that we put below, so you can click on that. But also, I wanna give some of my final thoughts on Orlando about what I think is best. So for me, I like staying in Lake Buena Vista, closer to Disney. I found those parks to be a bit more enriching now, I do like the Islands of Adventure at Universal Studios. I would recommend that, and definitely Volcano Bay. SeaWorld, you can miss it, but also, if you really want to see Shamu, then you can't miss it, and SeaWorld is worth it if you do decide to go. Now, I would say between Disney Springs and International Drive, try both. The rides at Icon Park are a bit like a carnival ride, but I really do like the 7D Motion Theater and also the Ripley's Believe It or Not. But that Orlando Star Flyer and the Orlando Slingshot are crazy rides. If you do decide to go all Disney while you're here, you can take a sneak peek at the Universal City Walk in Orlando without actually having to pay the entrance fee. So do consider the Universal City Walk because it's free to walk around there and you still get a feel for Universal. Also, they have the Orlando Science Center, which may be worth checking out. They also have some really big shopping malls here, like the Mall at Millennia, and the largest mall in Orlando is called the Florida Mall. And with that being said, that's gonna conclude our video from Orlando. Do check our best places to visit in Florida video by clicking here next, or watching our Orlando travel guide. A big thank you to all our subscribers and channel members.